player name. The next table that we want to build will be for the subform within our module, and we're going to call, and that's going to have items like the description and the price and the quantity. So we're going to create a manual table. So under the Create tab, we'll select Table, and we'll go to Design View as always, and we'll call this AP Detail Table. Okay, and we'll select OK. And now we're going to, whoops, we're going to call the first uh, field. We'll just call this accounts underscore detail underscore ID. And we'll leave that as an auto number. Next, we need to create a relationship between this table and our first accounts payable table so that everything gets pulled together. So we will call this purchase order number, just use NO here. And again, we'll use the lookup wizard within access to create the, the relationship. We'll leave the de default as uh, pulling information from another table. And now we wanna go to our AP table that we, did, we created previously. We'll select next. And all we want here is the purchase order number from our accounts payable table. That's all that we want to connect these uh, two tables together. We'll select next, ascending by the purchase order number, next. And of course, there's nothing here because, well, we haven't created any uh, uh, bills yet. We'll select next and enable data integrity. And finish, say yes. We're gonna save it again. And then once again, we'll, uh, as best practice, we'll go to our database tools, take a look at our relationships. And what we want to do here now is we want to grab the uh, AP detail table that we're creating right now. Let's highlight that and we'll drag it over here. And let's uh, organize this a little differently. Pull this down here and what we'll do is we'll move the AP table. There we go. So we can see what's going on there. So now we can see that we've successfully created the relationship um, between the accounts payable detail table and the accounts payable table. And we did that by this um, uh, field here, the purchase order number. You can see that little key here. So this is the primary key on this table. It's connected to the foreign key on the uh, detail table. All right, so let's close this. Yes, we'll say save. And we'll go through here and complete this now. Now, so we've got that. We want the description. Now, the description, again, we don't want um, the end user just typing anything they want in the field. We want to have a very controlled database. So again, that they have uh, a drop-down list to choose from or some various um, items to choose from that we've already programmed into our system. So what we're going to do here is, again, we're going to use the lookup wizard. And we're going to create a relationship now between this and our chart of accounts table. So they can pull in things like, you know, rent or utilities or office supplies, whatever it is that bill is, um, they'll be able to choose from this drop down list what expense category that belongs to. So we'll grab it again from the other table and it's chart of accounts. Highlight that, select, and we're going to pull over the ID and we just want the description. That's the only two items we need. We'll select next. And again, from the lookup wizard ascending, Choice, we will select description, again, so that when the user is tabbing through the fields, uh, when they get there and they hit the drop down menu, it will be the items in that description category that they'll be able to choose from, and we'll get a sneak preview of that on the next screen. And here it is. So these will be all the available categories that they'll be able to choose from as a description of what it is that the company is purchasing. Select next and save the data integrity. Save again, one more time. And as, again, as we always do, let's go back and check our relationships, make sure everything's connected, database tools, relationships. Now let's grab that chart of accounts table and pull that down over here. And actually we'll move it over, move things around a little bit. There we go. Now you can get a better idea of just how everything is connected. Okay, so we've now created a relationship between the uh, primary key on the description to the um, foreign key on the description on the AP detail table. 
We close this. We'll save our changes. All right, now we're going to want um, uh, quantity purchased. Okay, that's just going to be a number. So the end user will just, you know, one or two or ten, however it is. And then we're going to want um, purchase price. How much should we pay for it? And let's call this, actually, no, let's call it, um, I'm going to call it AP purchase price, just because we've got something else going on in another um, uh, table uh, next, and we don't want to have the fields with the same name. So I'm going to call this accounts payable purchase price. Okay, and for that, we're going to select currency. There we go. All right, and we're going to save this. And this is all that we're going to need. So these items here are going to appear in our subform. Okay, so we'll close that down. And now, uh, before we actually get into making the uh, final form and the last step in uh, part two here, is we're going to create a query. Uh, and this can be used on absolutely anything with an access. When you're creating a form and you want to have um, fields automatically fill in from one drop down selection, this is how you'll do it. So we, gotta, we have to create a query for that. So we'll go into our Create tab. Under Query, we'll select Query Design. And for this, we're only going to require two tables. Okay, so we're going to want our Accounts Payable table. So we'll drag that over here. Let's space this out. There we go. And we want our Supplier table. Let me get all this here. Okay. All right, so this query is going to actually, all the fields that we're going to put in here will be the actual fields within the, within the main form of our accounts payable module. So as we identify the fields uh, down here from left to right, this will these fields will appear on our final form from top to bottom. So we want to, we want to um, address these fields in the way that we want them to flow and look on our final form. So we're going to want our purchase order number. That'll, we'll need that to show up first. Okay. Uh, we'll also want the bill number. Okay. And we'll want the bill date. And we'll want to know the employee. Okay. Who set up this? Uh, who set up this invoice? Um, so now, not only across this top row, you can see the field names, but you can actually see the table that these um, fields are being selected from. Now, here's the key to make an autofill function work in Access. We want all the supplier information across here, and we want to have it automatically populate when the user selects the supplier name. And then what we want to have happen on our form is to have automatically the address, the city, the postal code, phone number, and email address show up automatically. Now, the key here is the supplier name. Because this is the supplier table, we would consider this the parent table. And we've got a supplier name over here. This would be considered the child table. Um, also, the supplier ID here is the primary key to the foreign key on this side. So what we want to do to make this lookup function work is we want to pull the supplier name from the child table and pull that down. Now what we want to do is we want to populate the rest of the fields, like the address, the city, postal code, and phone number, and so on and so forth. We want to pull those items from the parent table. Okay, so the address and the city, and just double click it, postal code, telephone number, and email address. So that's all our fields. Um, so again, the key here, the supplier name, we pull the foreign key or the... Um, child table. And then what will happen is, is Access will look for that um, supplier name, find it over here, almost like a VLOOKUP in Excel, and then find the corresponding fields within that table and automatically populate them for us. So that's kind of a nice feature. Okay, so we will save this and we will call it supplier underscore LU for lookup query. Okay, and we will select OK. 
Okay, and we will close this. Now we're going to uh, create uh, the top part of our form. Uh, now what we're going to do here is we're going to select the supplier lookup query because that's going to be our main form. And we're going to go to create. We will select our form wizard. And we can see that the supplier lookup query is automatically populated because we highlighted it here. If on yours it doesn't happen to show up automatically, just use the drop down menu and, and pull it up. Now I'm going to want everything that I've listed here. So I'll just hit the double arrows and everything will kind of pull over. Next, we need the items for the subform. And those, if you recall, we created on our accounts payable detail table. So pull this up. Here's our detail table. Now, we don't need everything on here. All we want is the description, the quantity purchased, and the purchase price. That's it. That's all we need for our, or pardon me, our accounts payable uh, form. We'll select next. And this is kind of a, a nice feature in the form wizard. It gives you a sneak little preview of what your form is going to be, how it's going to be laid out. So we can see here we've got across the top of the main form, the purchase order number, the bill and the date and so on. And then down in the center, you can see we've got this uh, little gray box here. And this represents our subform. And the fields in that subform are going to be the description, the quantity purchased, and the accounts uh, payable purchase price. And we can see here that it's automatically selected a form with a subform in it. And that's exactly what we want. So select next. We'll leave data sheet view as the default. And we're only going to change the name to the form. We're going to leave the subform name where it says AP Detail sub, uh, Table Subform. We're going to leave that alone. So we'll just call this Accounts Payable Form. Okay, and finish. All right, now I'm going to close this and then reopen it. You'll see here under your forms, you'll see accounts payable forms. I'm going to open that up. Now, <clears throat> the first thing we want to do here is, be okay, there we go. I'm going to put in a, a bill number here and a date to make sure that our calendar is working. Put in today's date. Uh, employee name, we want to make sure that that is working. So we'll pick anybody. Now, here's the test. Here's the real test. So what we want to have happen here is when we choose the supplier name, if we've done everything correctly within our query, then the address, the city, the postal code, phone number, and email address, that should all just automatically fill for us. Let's go in here and uh, I'm not sure, did we do it with Bell Canada? Let's try that. There we go. And we can see 49 Front Street, Toronto, the postal code, the phone number, and the email address, just like that, that quickly. So you can see where this would be very, very useful, very, uh, very much a time saver, and also save a lot of you know redundant data and errors being made in your system. And the last thing we want to check down here is um, our description. If you recall, this subform was made up from the AP AP detail uh, table, and we made a relationship between that table and our chart of accounts so that the items would show up on a list here. So let's see if it's there. Oh, there we go. So I can go here and I can select, you know, any category that I want. Okay, I just choose office supplies for the heck of it. And then, you know, I've got my quantities and so on. Okay, the, I'm going to stop here on part two because in part three, we're going to need to put in a total line item here. And then we're going to want to add some items below there to calculate our vouchers, subtotal, HST, and grand total.